There have been some awful, 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 awful versions of Microsoft Windows in the past, but there's also been some good ones. Vista's S tier. Fight me. So today we're going to be ranking every version of Windows, asterisk, I think every version? Because uh, I don't actually know the There's a right lot now. of them. As with a lot of this is videos, we do not know what we're about to be arguing about. But yeah. the first version of Windows is Windows 2000. How do we argue these? Because like so many people who are watching this video have never used these. We're going to give you our pain of being old people who had to use old versions of Windows. So the way that this went was Windows 2000 was built on the Windows NT code base, which was what eventually like Windows XP was using. Like it yeah. was a much more modern version versus the nine, I think it called it nine X, which is the Windows 90, like five, 98, the older school. Which is why we Windows. never got an official Windows nine. The, ah, that's a code. rumor. I don't actually know if that was true. Supposedly a lot of apps, if they detected Windows 9, thought my, Windows 98 or something. I don't fully believe my that, but- conspiracy theory What, is, is Y2K also real? Yeah, we have a whole movie about it. It's called Office Space. The thing is, this is back in a day where Microsoft were bringing out a lot of versions of Windows and you couldn't just download them. You had to actually go buy them and upgrade mm -hmm. them. Hardware compatibility was very different. The problem with 2000 was it was very expensive. And it also was one of these things where it was kind of better, but also was not a massive step forward. Like they had some of the core stuff that made it into like Windows XP, yeah. which was a huge step forward, but it was expensive. It was designed for businesses. And it was almost a fail on Microsoft's part that regular consumers who wanted an upgrade were going out and buying the business pro version of Windows. Or pirating it. Looks like you're trying to pirate an OS. <laughs> Can I help? That's what Clippy sounds like to me. I'm giving this one C. I like starting off with C because like if we're so negative so quickly, I'm going C. I'm going okay, C. C tier. Next up we I, have Windows ME. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I feel this is really easy. So to be fair, there's a lot of discussion about how Microsoft development was done back here. So it's, I'm not super exactly clear on the timelines, but as far as I know, NT and XP, like that was meant to be earlier. And ME was almost more of a stopgap to make yet another Windows 9X based OS, which was filled filled with issues. Now, mind you, it wasn't all bad. There were some good things in it. Like it had Windows Movie Maker in it. I actually started my channel with Windows Movie Maker. One of the famous lines from Mac mm. is just, it just works. That was just like a thing. You, like you could plug in like any device to a Mac and it, sure. just, it quote unquote just works. What they did with that was they bloated the software, the yeah. OS, and because everything. they just included every driver to every printer to every whatever on the market. And that's why you had these massive OSs. And that's what, that's what ME did. This OS from 2000 was Bad. aptly named the Windows Mistake Edition, and we're gonna rank it aptly so as an F. Not even talking about the bugs. Windows Phone, oh, Matt. come on. How the hell are we gonna rank Windows Phone? I would say the ceiling is a B. While huh. the tiles were cool and whatnot. Yeah. One, do we still use tiles? No. The thing I liked about Windows Phone was that it was very, very quick and responsive considering, especially like Android in these days was still kind of laggy and slow. iOS was pretty quick, but Windows Phone was so clear and concise, yeah. right? Mind you, you might not have liked the style, and I wasn't like a massive, massive fan, but everything was very cohesive, quick, snappy, and it looked nice. Now, the big it issue did. with Windows Phone was app support. No Google apps, as far as I know, are yeah. very, very few. I think they had like an app or two, but it wasn't like any kind of like real support. That almost alone was enough to kill Windows Phone because Google obviously had a vested interest in making sure that Android was successful and iOS was too big to ignore. Honestly, for all the times that I did videos on Windows Phones and stuff, I actually never daily drove a Windows Phone <laughs> for more than like a month at a time. I feel like it's D and I really am D. sad about that. Is this the rare time where I was going to be way nicer? I think so. It was so okay. good, but it almost deserves a lower ranking due to the fact that it was so close to greatness and yet completely and totally failed. You want to give it a D? I'm going to give it the D, Matt. Give it the D. Next up, we have <laughs> Windows Vista. F. F. S tier, There's baby. nothing to talk about this. It is F tier alone because it removed Space Cadet 3D Pinball. I'm going to make an impassioned argument for why Vista was a major step forward. Oh, now, here we keep go. Keep in mind, Vista we had go. six years of development hell, right? So we talked about like, you know, Windows NT and ME, and they were going to go to an all new code base. Well, Vista was an all new code base. Vista was and still is the basis for Windows 11 today. I look at Windows Vista as like the beginning of modern Windows. And I don't see that as a pro because I see history repeating itself right now. The requirements 
to get Vista yeah, running were so high. It's the same reason all these people talk about my $3,000 computer can't run Windows 11. This is Vista all over again. I'll admit there were problems with Vista, the high system resources, and the fact that it was clearly, after all those years, still not fully baked. Windows 7 was really the complete version of Vista. Like, Vista was like the beta of Windows 7. I think most people fondly look back at Windows 7, but I'll argue that Windows 7 and 8 and 10 and all the new versions would not have existed without Vista. I honestly, sincerely, completely would give Vista a C. I'm a, I'm a Vista stan. I stand for Vista. Vista is the reason I stopped using Windows. I'm saying D. Moving Fine. on. D, D, all right, all right. Windows oh. 95. It was great. For a lot of households in America, yeah. I can't speak for the rest of the world just because I was not in the rest of the world <laughs> in the summer of 1995. 95 and 98 were like the first, to me, really popular versions of Windows and computers in general. And yeah. then obviously XP after that. The problem is I can't speak from experience because we didn't have a computer when Windows 95 came out. I've used it very briefly. I know it has a great reputation, but I, I was six and I don't think I could really evaluate Windows 95 all that well. I'm giving this an A tier. I'll just, like I'll just this... agree with you blindly. Also, Steve Ballmer is very excited about this. Steve and Ballmer anything was. that Steve Ballmer is excited no, no, for, no, no, besides no, the Clippers, I'm always excited for. You know what he was excited for that wasn't that great though? Windows 10! Uh, Steve Ballmer was checked Steve, out, man. I, I, Unlike Vista, and especially the, the jump from XP to Vista, which was, it was six years and there were some service packs, but XP didn't evolve that much. Windows 10 from the beginning to the end of its sort of run when 11 came out, was a massively overhauled OS. Every few months, it felt like Microsoft were bringing out major new features. Yeah. Windows 10, when it first came out, was a step forward from eight, but no. Windows 10 toward the end was terrific and still is, I think, what most people are running on their systems, right? Now, there were some issues with Windows 10. Not only did they get a lot more aggressive with the auto updates, but the yep. telemetry and the data gathering and the analytics that were running in the background. Yep. It also finally got rid of Internet Explorer for realsies, which was great. To me, it's A tier, I guess. I don't think I could say 10 is S tier. I think it's a very, very good a version tier. of Windows, but I also don't think it was particularly revolutionary. I think it was better than like 8, although 8.1 was reasonable. I'll give you a tier. I'll give you A tier. All right, moving on. Windows NT. Oh, wow. So, so 1993 was when Windows NT came out. It stood for new, new technology. technology. It really was the basis for Windows going forward. You know, we were talking about all the Windows NT stuff. Right. NT was the first kind of modern, I don't want to say redesign, but it was like, it was a structurally very, very different OS under the hood. And it took them, what, seven, eight years before it finally came to the mainstream with Windows XP? How do you even rank that? I mean, like, we gave, we gave Windows 95 an A. I say we give this one a B. You want to go with B? You want to go with B? I'll go with you. Moving on. Windows 7. Here's what I got to tell you. I have never once used Windows 7. Windows 7 was... As if the clouds parted, the angels began singing, and all became right with the world. The miracle you just described yeah. really contradicts how you were fighting to give Vista a C. Seven, I think, gets a little bit of an extra boost because most people hated Vista because when Vista first came out, no one gave it, a, well, people who gave it a shot had a bad experience and then bailed on it and then they just kind of waited until yep. Windows 7 came out. That's exactly what happened. But with me. if you stuck with Vista toward the end, you would have realized that 7 wasn't actually that big of a difference. I'm bordering between A or S. The only reason why I don't want to give it full S tier is just because what Windows 7 was was basically just slightly better Vista. And I know most people don't want to agree with that. But like, if Vista is all the way down at a D, I feel like 7 is like an A. I'm going to counter argument. Again, not having used it, so don't at me. So I, now I can say whatever I want. Clearly, Microsoft thought it was not an S tier because they decided to follow it up with 8. <laughs> I'll give you 8 tier. I'll give you eight tier. Maybe it's our next operating system, which is Windows Mobile, not an S tier. I will tell um, you that. This is where I do have nostalgia. Okay. I was I was firmly a Palm Pilot person. This was like my laptop for a while. I had a dock for it. Whoa. I never used Windows Mobile. My first Windows Mobile experience was Windows Phone. So wh where do you rank Windows Mobile? I'm not gonna pretend like it was better than like XP or whatever. I'll give it a B. Okay, B tier it is. Next up we have Windows 8. Yeesh. The thing was, 
Windows 8 brought in a very different design language where you had like the traditional desktop, but you also had the full tile view. But the problem was while they were trying to get people like the iPad and stuff, I didn't want my 24 inch 1080p desktop display to be a bunch of dumb well, tiles the tile, like a the mobile tiles app. were built for touchscreen. Like if you're trying to do a home desktop, it just didn't and they work got out. rid of the start menu. So That's, you couldn't avoid it. You literally hit the start key or the windows key. And instead of getting yeah. your normal little menu, you got this huge so, full screen interface, which was dumb and looked stupid. Here, here's my controversial take. Yeah. I want to give this an F tier just because of all the goddamn phone calls I got from my parents. <laughs> where's, where's the start menu? Next up, we have wait, Windows 365. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so, okay, so if you're not familiar, Windows 365 is really Windows 11, but in the cloud. You're not actually owning a computer, right? You could access this with, again, pretty much any web browser up to and including your phone if you have a keyboard or some very, very large amount of patience. And the way it works is that you pay a subscription. It starts, I think, at like $28 a month and goes up. It basically depends on how much RAM you want, CPU, like how much resources you want on that dedicated cloud system. We got Windows 365 running on, Xbox? on, on an Xbox. On and an then, iPad? And then in that Windows 365, we got xCloud running. That was the greatest moment of Matt's entire yeah. life. My problem with it was when we looked at the pricing, the pricing is just very too, expensive. It, it, it's expensive and the specs you get for like even like that Love the cheapest thing is like it's like what like one core the two cores four like, gigs of ram or yeah something. it's it's you really need to spend 50 60 bucks at least a month on this which is again why it is for enterprises and not for people to me this is like c or d yeah i'll give i'll give okay whatever you want to do on that I'll, I'll, I'll give it a d moving on windows 1.0 oh good lord i never never in my life have used windows 1.0 historically incredibly important it made microsoft a multi-billion dollar company like hugely hugely important Head paint but even in back in one the paint was good actually. i think i think we got to go c windows S -tier. xp s tier s tier s tier no doubt about it wait 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 yeah, go ahead. Mark the time. Austin Evans and Matt Ancini unanimously agree on something. What user icon did you pick? Oh, I was the chess piece. You were the chess piece. I was chess. I think it was a soccer ball. Soccer ball, 100%. Absolutely. Can everyone just pause for a moment? That might be the greatest sound ever created by humans. Windows 11. Oh. Look, man. Oh. We're early into Windows 11. Less than a year old at this point. But right now... I would say unimpressed. I think Windows 11, again, if you look at the historical context, is hurt a little bit by the fact that Windows 10 got so many years of updates. If Windows 10 would have been like previous versions of Windows where it would have gotten like a couple of big chunks and that's it, and we've got all the new stuff in Windows 11 all at once, cool. But Windows 11 just basically felt like Windows, the next version of Windows 10, just with some shiny stuff and a few things under the hood. I mean, obviously it's not going to be as huge and as robust and as groundbreaking as a Windows version could be. Which is fine. It is fine. Except there's problems all, with it all the sketch stuff that they've done in the yeah. background. No more offline accounts. That's that's pissed off a lot of people. Also, the support. Now, yes, yes, it is a free upgrade from Windows 10. However, you need a ridiculously high standard of hardware to run Windows 11 authentically. And the thing is, it's just because Microsoft wanted it to be like that. It's been a nightmare. And I, I don't know what off the top of my head, what the adoption is on Windows 11 at this point, but it's gotta be small because of, we gave Windows 10 an A. I think it's gotta be a C. I, I agree with you. I was gonna say like, it'd have to be B at best, but then with all the, the poor rollout has brought it down to a C for me. All right, next up we've got Windows 98. So Ooh. here's the thing with Windows 98, because I'm assuming you didn't use this one either. This is one where it gets a little controversial. On paper was actually a pretty good upgrade. However, again, if Windows 95 was what made everything accessible to the average consumer, Windows 98 kind of broke that a little bit. A ton of people were frustrated with, they they knew Windows 95, mm -hmm. and then they no longer knew Windows 98 when it came up. It yeah. was early days when people weren't used to things radically changing right. when you got a new update, right? They're like, oh, it's just gonna like run faster, so my like printer's gonna work better or whatever. And then you had ME, you also had 2000, and you had XP all come out in like a three year time span. But Microsoft, it felt like they were thrashing into the surface to be constantly cranking out stuff. It was almost like they were crumbling under their own weight a little bit. And 98, while again, I can't really speak to it that much as far as personally using it, it felt like it was at a time where it was right before a huge transition to XP and it wasn't really able to live up to its full potential. 
that being said, I think it was fine. Like a B seems like a B cool seems to fine to me. Yeah, like I will say though one thing: uh, Windows 98 has the best logo. All right, our last one: Windows CE. This is a really weird one because CE was never actually like a mainstream version of Windows. This was meant to be a version of Windows that lived in something like an ATM or lived inside like signage or whatever. And fun fact, it's still supported even though it came out in 1996. Yeah. It is still going to be supported until 2023. And it was a totally different kernel compared to NT, into DOS. On the surface was Windows E and it ran Windows E kind of things, but it was a very different thing that was really designed to be in and running for years and years and years at a time with very little maintenance. I mean, the fact that it came out in 1996 and it's still being supported today is badass. C tier? I I'll give you C tier. I'll give you know, like it's right in the middle. Let us know what you liked the most out of all Windows operating systems. Are we way off base? Are we? If any Windows ME stands show up, they're going to be immediately banned from the comments. You've yeah, been warned. Just banned. Like, subscribe, follow. We'll catch you in the next one.